Hi, Andrew McNair here. We're continuing our video series on investing, so thanks for watching. I'm sure you'd like to know how you can get rich from the stock market, also known as Wall Street. Anytime I talk about investing, this is one of the most common questions I've gotten through the years. And I want to start with a caveat. The stock market is risky. Investment risk is inherent to the stock market. So that's why there's so many disclosures on what I and other investment professionals say, because you can and sometimes will lose your money. But I'm with Solomon here. The wisest man who have ever lived, lived thousands of years ago, once said, he who observes the wind will not sow, and he who regards the clouds will not reap. To put it in today's language, scared money doesn't make any money. To make a profit, you have to do something. You have to take risk. And historically, the stock market has generated superior returns above nearly every investment out there. Although historical returns may not always translate to personal returns, you have to understand that you need to have your money not sit idle to take inflation on the offensive front. First, in order to invest in the stock market, you have to understand how it works. From the consumer to the stock owner, let's use Starbucks down the street for an example. Consumers are the customers who buy coffee in the cafe, and Starbucks exchanges services or goods for money. They get their expensive latte with an extra shot and call it a done deal. They have actually given their money to Starbucks. The next tier is employees. It's the complete opposite. Unlike consumers, employees actually exchange their time for money. They're receiving money from Starbucks. Then you have people who own the stock, known as stockholders or shareholders. They're at the top tier because they exchange their money for an ownership stake in Starbucks. The stock owner doesn't have to do anything. While they're sleeping, Starbucks is working, working hard to return their money to them with extra. As the company grows and more, the more people that goes through the drive through line for that expensive latte makes the stock worth more and more over time, and thus the stock value increases in value, and you get a greater return on your money. The contrast is also true. However, if the economy goes down, the company goes down, your stock value goes down. And so that's why it's so important to follow that timeless advice to buy low and sell high versus the opposite of buying high and then selling low. Next, you need to understand how you as the stockholder earn money. Investment growth comes in two ways, appreciation and dividends. When you own stock, price appreciation means that when the stock goes up, you can sell it for a profit. The other way to earn money on stock is through dividends. Dividends are payments that the company makes to the stockholder for owning the stock. The stock stays in your hands, but you get consistent income and returns, and that's for your ownership. Keep in mind, though, that not all stocks pay dividends. So how can you make money in the stock market? Everyone will tell you that they have the perfect portfolio, the perfect technique, the secret formula that is more valuable than Coca-Cola, but those so-called silver bullets haven't made billionaire investors over time. No, billionaire investors buy investments and hold for a long time. They're not stock traders. How many stock traders do you know that are billionaires? Take it from me. There are three ways they make money in the stock market. First, create a portfolio that's diversified. This is the number one advice everyone in the financial world gives, and for good reason. But sadly, very few people take their own advice. You should have a little bit of bonds in there, just a little bit, little, a little bit of stocks in small companies, medium-sized companies, large companies, international real estate, and your mix shouldn't be too heavy in any sector either. And then hold on for dear life to this portfolio and rebalance it on a regular quarterly basis. It's simple, but it's also simple not to do. What do people do? They buy XYZ fund and ABC fund. And when XYZ fund goes up, they never rebalance because they don't want to sell XYZ fund. They wanted to see it go to the moon. And unfortunately, it doesn't go to the moon. It crashes in the Atlantic. You need to run your portfolio like someone who invests for an entire college endowment. Someone that sticks with the philosophy in good times as well as bad. Check out one of my favorite books. David Swinson wrote this book for the Yale Endowment, Unconventional Success. 
great track record, fabulous book. Second, keep your trades and your changes low. It's been proven that the more human interaction with a portfolio, the worse the portfolio does. And there's a few reasons for this. You can create tax consequences for selling and also trade fees for selling. Also, staying out of the market on certain days to try to time the market can cost you a lot of money in the long term. Statistics and economists have proven you need to stay with it for the long haul. Finally, keep on keeping on. Saving by dollar cost averaging works better over time because markets are going to go up and down and it goes to those who are consistent and confident and are always thinking about delayed gratification and are investing for the long haul. You're going to make a really nice profit when the market goes back up, but you have to wait for it to go back up. And we talked about this earlier. The market is often manic depressive and it realizes that the earth is not going to catch on fire. So it course corrects and that's to your benefit if you're dollar cost averaging for the long haul. That's it for today. But if you have money that you know you won't need for the next decade or so, there have been very few investments historically that have beat the stock market for over a 10 year period. Even retirees should still have a portion of their retirement assets invested in the market. Now, how much should you have is very specific to you, but the market is a great way for you to start investing. If you want to learn more about my own financial journey, about amassing my wealth and then giving it away, pick up my new book, The Giving Crisis, by going to richyoungpowerful.com slash book. That's richyoungpowerful.com slash book to get your book with all the bonuses. I want to thank you for watching. Be sure to click subscribe so you don't miss any of our episodes. And be sure to check out my podcast too, Rich Young and Powerful on iTunes and other podcast platforms. Until next time, remember to invest your life into something that will outlive it. Now that's living to give. <music>